All right, guys, the last test is going to be a compression test. All right, I want to see 120 pounds on there. I want to see at least 120 pounds. That means you got good compression. That piston is squeezing that air really, really 120 pounds worth. All right, it won't start. The engine will not start if it's 95 or below. It's considered a bad motor. Not enough compression for combustion. That makes sense, right? Yeah. All right, let's crank it up. This will seal up the spark plug hole. That's why I'm pressing down on it. All right, we got automatically got a bad motor. All right, shut it down. Well, it's not necessarily a bad motor. So she, she told you right. But the problem is you have 60 pounds on there. So that what's what's going on is that piston is not squeezing enough air together to get a good boom and an explosion. So that's what's happening. So you need a head job. A head job, you don't need necessarily need a new motor, but you do have to get a head at least a head job done. And then your car will be running good again. All right, let's begin. Uh took out the coil packs. I probably should have removed the battery. <laughs> I probably should have removed the battery connection. You know, I know how you guys are. You didn't take off the battery first. All right. All right. I apologize to you picky people. All right. We're taking off the battery connection. All right. We're going to end up removing the battery. We're going to remove uh, the air cleaner housing, all the tube, because we want to get up in this area. All right. So we're going to start over here and we'll work our way to the left. Okay. wrench on that one all right you're gonna need a 13 millimeter I believe on the take the battery out okay that's that hold down clamp on the bottom of the battery all right consolidate all your bolts all your pieces okay makes it easier to install all right so uh, all right, let's get the battery out of there. Some 12 millimeter bolts down here on the battery box. All right. I think they're 12s. I don't know, I'm using a 13 socket though, because I was too lazy to get a 12 millimeter that time. They were loose anyways. All right, four bolts four bolts okay we got some clips we got some clips down here get your little screwdriver some needle nose pliers or something or your fingers like I'm doing push it in a little bit and push it pull them out like that all right you got a 10 millimeter right there let's get that bolt out of there All right, guys, as you see, we the computer came out together with the box on that. Just get those 10 millimeter bolts, you know, out. All right. And you just unplug the computer gently, okay? And uh, pull it on out of there. Not a big deal. All right, at this time, you're going to have to get a uh, drain pan. Get a drain pan underneath there because you're going to take these lines off. Uh, all right, now you're going to have to get a drain pan because we're going to remove all of this because remember, we're taking off the cylinder head, so we're removing everything. We're stripping the cylinder head down, okay? Not a real big deal. It looks like they're 12 millimeters, 13 millimeters. We'll find out. Uh, matter of fact, I'll find out now for you. I think they're 12s. It's a Hyundai. Yeah, it's going to be a 12 millimeter. That's a 13. Okay. So third 12 millimeter, take the clamps off. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to do all that on this one. 
Let's just start with the 12 millimeters. Let's see if I can get the whole thing off and leave it alone. Kind of remove, got to remove those clamps right there. Those hoses on that side of it, but we might be able to just get this out of the way. Let's try it. All right, I'm going to be using one of these for most of this job. It'd be nice if you had one. It'd make things go a lot quicker. All right, make sure you get that drain pan underneath there. All right, it looks like I got uh, two nuts and two bolts out of there. Okay. Bottom hose comes off first and has a thermostat behind there. Here's the thermostat. We're replacing everything. When we do a job like this, we're replacing everything. The thermostat is we're getting replaced too. Okay? Ain't no sense of half stepping in. Let's just get it done. All right. We can move these hoses out of the way for now. Good enough. And I'm going to start removing the end of those uh, bolts. Looks like there's one, two. There's like two bolts on the thermostat housing. All right, so let me get those off. Two bolts, two nuts. All right, there's one. Two. All right, remove all the valve cover bolts, and you got two 10 millimeters, two 10 millimeter bolts on the outside of the timing belt cover. Okay, so you have to remove those. Just gonna leave them there safekeeping. All right, now this valve cover should come off. Okay. Oops. There it is. All right, here's the inside of it. It's got a little bit of grit in it. It's not too terribly bad. Okay, I can deal with that. Just going to have to clean everything up before you reinstall. Make sure everything is clean. All right. We're going to end up putting the valve, uh, new valve cover gaskets on it as well. All right, everything is going to be new. All right, we're also, when we get down to the nitty gritty, when we start rebuilding, we'll go over the timing chain on the back of the motor. You got a timing belt on the front, you got a timing chain on the back. It has to be timed. Uh, it has to be timed. Uh, together okay because we only have one cam over here it turns only this one it drives this camshaft and this chain connects to that camshaft and turns that camshaft okay so that's why this one has to be timed all right so we'll do that later let's go ahead and start removing the uh the exhaust at this time take off the shield unplug the uh unplug the uh, oxygen sensor and start removing it. Let's do it. You want to get everything off of here, okay? Make sure you get all these, all these 10 millimeter bolts holding down these brackets and pay attention to how they are mounted and how you dismount them, okay? All right. And then we got a whole little harness here. Just gonna put that up there for safekeepings. All right, let's uh, jack this vehicle up and let's get those bolts down there on the converter, lower converter. Let's get those bolts out so we can remove this uh, exhaust. All right, let's get a 15 millimeter socket. All right. Maybe a swivel would be nice too. I don't know. We'll see. It seems like I remember a bracket. Yeah, there's a bracket on it. 
Okay, let's remove these two bolts. And it is, what do I have in my hand? I have a 15. It's not gonna be a 15, it's gonna be a 17. Sure you don't lose your nuts. I'll put them away in a minute. Okay, so now we got to get the bracket off. Let's get over there and check it out. All right. It looks like it's going to be like a 17, 17 millimeter bolt right there. All right, give you a view of it. All right, 17, I think there's two of them. Actually, I'm not even gonna do it that way. There's a bolt back here. Yeah, that's right, I forgot. There's a bolt back here. Just take that one off and that's good enough. All right, 17 millimeter. It looks like our 19. Uh, let's check it. Looks like it's gonna be a 19, but I could, and I'm wrong. All right, 17 millimeter, back here. All right, you guys saw that converter move. All right, so now we got one, two, three. Not a big deal. Now your converter is loose. All right, let's get back. All right, good enough. We don't have to do no more on the exhaust. Okay, we're good enough. We got clearance, it's all for the studs. Now let's go for the intake manifold and then we'll do this last, all right? Intake manifold. All right, right down on the bottom, you'll see a, uh, you'll see a connector that has another clip on it like this. All right, don't lose your clip. Just unplug it. That way you can get this harness out of your way completely, you know? Just get it out of the way, okay? All right, let's see. Let's start unplugging the injectors at this time. There's a little sensor back here in the back. It's like a coolant temperature sensor, it is. Let's go ahead and plug, unplug that. Uh, that one's trying to be difficult. Uh, okay. All right. Because it's kind of hidden back there. You don't want to uh, start removing that head and then you pull it up and then you start breaking harnesses. So you always give a good in a visual inspection before you just start yanking and pulling stuff, okay? We're not trying to yank and pull nothing. And then when you put it back together, then you got another problem. Then you got to find that problem, all right? So just be careful, be gentle, be gentle. All right, let's start unplugging injectors. There's one, there's two, there's three. Ah, there's four. All right, we're gonna get the fuel rail out of there. They're 12 millimeter, two 12 millimeters.
All right, once you remove all those, the intake manifold bolts, you'll see it springs back a little bit. So you're gonna have to take off a bolt on the bottom. There's a little bar down there that connects that connects that okay so you're going to go down to the bottom crawl underneath the car take that i think it's a 12 millimeter bolt take it out and you'll be able to push that thing back let me go ahead and do that hell i'll bring you down there with me all right there we go it's loose so you're just going to back it off it's a tight fit can you see what i'm doing yeah it's a tight fit over here on this uh, on the firewall just you know just kind of work it down off the studs and boom and there you have it okay it's all you got to do you don't have to disconnect anything over there there's a couple uh harnesses over there connected to the uh to the plenum the intake just don't worry about them leave them alone we're not trying to disconnect everything you know we're just trying to get this job done and uh, easily and safely without messing stuff up. Okay, so just get it out of the way is how I do things. All right, let's move on. We got that out of the way. We got the exhaust out of there. And the reason I'm doing this job, by the way, is because I had a misfire on number three cylinder. If you look down in these cylinders, how dry that is, how wet that is, how dry, how dry. So I have a misfire on number three. We're gonna correct that. So that's why I'm doing a head job for your information. So we'll do, when we get the head off, we'll do, we'll do a water test, but it's still going to the machine shop because I'm going to have them totally rework the head. It's probably a bent valve, uh, knowing this car or this accent. So we're going to handle it. All right, we got our, uh, we're taking the power steering pump off now. We're just going to get it out of the way. We're not disconnecting any lines unless we have to. I already got the tire off, guys. I didn't think you guys needed me to show you how to take off the tire. So I didn't do it on video. I need another gun. I need another air ratchet. Plus, I'm running out of air. Okay. There's one bolt over there. You're just gonna have to stick your socket in between and that hole in the pulley. There's one on this side as well. Yeah, I'm out of here. All right, you see it wiggling around? All right, so we're almost loose. Right. I did not take the belt off. You noticed that, right? I did not take the belt off. All right, I want you to take those two bolts out, one here and one there, through the pulley. You can take the power steering pump and just move it out of the way. Now, since it's going to the head shop, you're going to have to take out all these brackets that are on your uh, head. You don't have to do it all right now, but I'm going to do this one right now because the machine shop is going to take them off anyways for you. And they're going to put them in a box or put them in a bag for you. So we're going to take them off, uh, take a visual, take a picture of it, see how way, which way it goes and remove it. Okay. So I'm going to do that here in a few minutes, just to remove the bracket. In the meantime, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to take the shielding off of here, 10 millimeter bolt uh and 10 millimeter bolt right there okay and it should this plastic piece will come off we can get to our crankshaft and our timing cover i told you guys i am going to use this gun all the way through because it is so much faster than trying to use a ratchet it's worth the money to get one of these things okay all right, and bam, there you go. Let's get this up here. Let's get our bolts. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put these bolts back where they go. That way I have less bolts 
in my bin because if you notice my bin, and I'm going to show you, there is a lot of bolts on this job. It's nothing to be afraid of because a lot of them are just like the valve cover bolts. You got like 20 of them. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, something like that. So, you know, those are all my bolts. I got some bolts over here too. So just try anytime you can do that. Like when I take these off, I'm going to put these bolts back in the head as well. And that way I can not pile up my trays full of bolts. And I know where the bolts go when I'm putting it back together again. I'm not going to say, oh, this is, this looks like the one. No, oh, no, that one. Then you start counting the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You know, anybody got time for all that? So let's just do it easy. Just put the bolts back in anywhere you can, okay? Make things easier for you is all I'm saying. All right, let's move on. Let's take that bracket off. We'll get down there and take that crankshaft pulley off. All right, guys. Removing the harmonic balancer. I guess I can get some light for you. One sec. All right. All right. Removing the harmonic balancer, all right? Now you can take the belt off first. So you're gonna have to loosen up this 14 millimeter. Let me do that for you. I don't know if I can get a good bite on it, that is. Ah! Anyways, loosen that bolt up. See if I can get it. All right, you just want to loosen this bolt up. Just loosen it up. That's good enough. And there's a 12 millimeter. All right. Sorry about that. I'm trying to get the right position for you. There's a 12 millimeter back here. You just loosen that up because that's the adjuster bolt right there, okay? You just loosen it up and that'll loosen up the pulley and you'll be able to slide it and get off that and get that belt off. All right. Okay, you just loosen it, loosen it. Not a big deal. Loosening up. See that belt getting looser? Okay. Okay. Let me get on my back. Back up, Shadow. Back up, boy. You want to help me out? You want to help? Okay. Guess. Hey, baby. Bubba, give me a kissy kissy. We gotta get the alternator belt off. Let's get it off. Okay. That's a good baby. That's my baby, baby, baby. Okay, let's go. Come on, back it up. Back it up. Back. 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 Boy, what you trying to do? You trying to hump your daddy? You don't hump your daddy, Shadow. How many times I got to tell you? All right. Alternator belt. In for the alternator belt. <coughs> Just loosen it up. That's all you have to do. And then you're going to get a wrench and you're going to loosen the adjusting bolt, which is right there you guys see it right there same bolt the head's right there 12 millimeter on that let's get a wrench and you guys don't really need to see me do this do you you guys get the point all right flip it up and flip it up and you should be able to pull on that alternator's belt without loosening up 
anything else. I know there's a bottom bolt on the alternator. I know there's a bottom bolt on the alternator, but I'm not really trying to loosen up that belt unless I have to. Loosen up that bolt unless I have to. It looks like it's gonna make me. No, it's not. I'm not gonna let it make me do that. I could. It ain't like it's that difficult. It's right there. All right. Sometimes you can pull it and, you know, you can move it, but in this case, I'm gonna have to remove or loosen up that bolt in the back of the alternator. All right, 12 millimeter on the back side of the alternator. Not a big deal, 12 millimeter. Let's just loosen it up. That's all we should need. Pull on it. You see that it moves. Now the belt is loose. Not a big deal, y'all. All right. Let's keep moving. You guys are doing good work so far. Very good work. All right. Let me get the belt. All right, guys. It's time to get the harmonic balancer bolt off. Now I'm going to use air to get this off, you know, guys. But... You guys are probably going to use a breaker bar. And just so I can help you out, I got a video on removing harmonic balancer bolts. Uh, you can search it on my page. Uh, but you can also use a pry breaker bar, okay? And all you really got to do, you know that pulley is going to turn clockwise on this, all right? So what you're going to do you're going to get your breaker bar on there like that a long breaker bar you're going to put your bolt you're going to put a socket on it and you simply you're going to make sure that it's blocked so it's not going to you know come up and start breaking shit okay you don't want to break nothing just make sure that the other end is hitting steel so it can't move all right so when that turns clockwise it'll stop it and that when you turn the motor over when you start the when you when you engage the starter with the key boom boom just bump it bump it and then it'll break that nut loose you can pull it out of there and you can unscrew it okay and then you should be able to pull this pulley right off of there it is it is a Hyundai so you just kind of wiggle it off and there it is all right so when you if you do the breaker bar routine uh just be very careful don't have your hands in there and don't try to hold it don't have your hands nowhere near that okay just let the starter do the work for you and you come out here and loosen it up please do not have your hand and you know and hold it while someone bumps the key don't do that please don't do that you'll hurt yourself maybe so just leave it alone and that's it. Watch the video. Watch a video, but I sure All right, two 10 millimeter bolts. One here, one over there. This one has a little bracket on it. It goes, it goes on that. Okay, that's where the bracket mounts to as well. Just pull it off. Okay, there's our top of the timing belt. Let's get the lower section off. All right, we're just about there. Let me just show you this section right here before you take the lower cover off. Just notice the sleeve, okay? The sleeve goes on top of the timing cover, okay? It goes like that. All right, there's the keyway. All right, so remember it goes outside of the timing cover. Okay, it's pretty important. If you don't put it on there, you're probably going to get a lot of noise. So make sure you put it on top of the timing cover. All right, so let's remove the timing belt and then we'll remove that, uh, remove the head bolt. I'm going to need a uh, 12 millimeter. 
one of these days I'm going to get a lift and a nice shot. Not that far along. Not that far down the road either. So stay with me, guys. We're going to do. All right, if you notice on the other side of that pulley, there's another 12 millimeter. You know, you can loosen this one up first if you wanted to. All right, I just want to get it loose. So a couple turns. And now the timing belt, you can get the timing belt off, okay? Actually, you know what we should have did? Matter of fact, I am gonna, I'm just still gonna do it. I'm gonna tighten it up real quick. Again, I'm sorry. Don't do this yet. Wait a minute, we gotta get this engine in time first. Let me go ahead and tighten up that, that tensioner. All I'm gonna do is tighten up that one bolt, that one right there that one right there I'm gonna tighten that one up and then we're gonna spin this motor over that's all I'm gonna do okay let's go ahead and clean up the crankshaft area so we can see the timing marks a little bit better all right I kind of sprayed off the yellow but it's okay. It has a dot on it. All right. You see that? You see that little nipple on the very other end of it? You see the timing mark, right? All right. You see, guys, see that little red mark back there? See that little red mark back there? right there so when you look in that hole you should see it and you do so we're at top dead center we are perfectly in time so when you reinstall that's what you want it to look like you want this hole to line up you want that crankshaft to line up and that's it you put it back together again okay so anyways we're good let's take this belt off and uh, we can remove this head Another way you can tell that it's on top dead center is if you see this, the lobe is pointing towards each other. You see that lobe is pointing, kind of pointing toward each other. Okay, this is important. So when you do your time, your, your chain, that you make sure that these cams are pointing at each other when you time them, because there's several, there's a couple different dots if I remember right, on these, uh, on the timing marks on that. So make sure they're, they're together. And I believe it's six, I believe it's six links apart. And we'll get into that on the reassembly. Uh, and I got another video on YouTube about the timing. I think it's timing marks on a Hyundai Accent for that. If you want to look that up on YouTube. Uh, I think, I believe, I remember there were six links. It was black link. It was black link and six links between. Black link, one, two, three, four, five, six, black link. Okay, so let's remove the head. We're almost done. All right, guys, we're almost done. It is, uh, it's actually Sunday today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing done. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward this thing and uh, we're going to remove all those rocker, all the rocker caps. All right. Remove all these chains, blah, 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 you know, and get this head off of there. And I think we have to remove the head bolts. I think they're 10 millimeters. I don't know. We'll find out later. I forgot. So let's do the rock. All right, guys, let's remove this dang head, all right? Uh, rocker, rocker caps, all of them. Take them all out. Put them in order. Put all your rocker caps in order, okay, as they came off. Let's do it. So 
get these cams out of here. Get your little pry bar. Now you got your cams out of there. I'm gonna go set these on the workbench. All right, you see what I'm saying about making sure when you put the cam, that chain on there, that those lobes are kind of pointing together a little bit. It's, it's, good little, uh, it's a good little landmark, so to speak. Okay, so now we just got to get these head bolts out of there and we can totally remove the head. Let's get the head bolts out of there. Right, it's going to be an eight millimeter hex head on these bolts. There's a little sludge that was in there, so I kind of was tapping it down with a hammer. I missed two of them. Get you a good eight millimeter, get you a strong one. Oh, yeah, definitely get you a strong one. All right, get my hammer, tap down on it a little bit, use a little vibration to help me break it loose. That one, I think it's stripped out. I don't know what happened, but I know my socket's not fitting very good anymore. I'll tell you that. All right, All right got that. Come on, baby. Just gotta get through. I just gotta get one more out. Don't be a bitch. Yeah, just get out of there. <sighs> yep, it's going to be a bitch, y'all. Ah! <sighs> what the fuck? Excuse me, I mean, sorry, 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 sorry. It's always one, huh? pretty good. We're going to get it off. Give me a second. Let me go find another one. All right, let's try it again. Oh, got it. I had to regrind my, uh, Regrind that hex head a little bit. I don't want it to slip no more. Okay, I got it. Whoop whoop. All right. Ah. 
Got it. Let's get the bolts out of there. One, we're doing new head gaskets, new head bolts. The whole nine yards, y'all. No shortcuts. There's little bitty washers on the bottom of these too, so you want to be careful you get them all, okay? Make sure that you get them all is what I meant to say. One. Two. Three. All right, I gotta take these, uh, I gotta take the motor mount, the rest of the motor mount off. Yeah, I gotta take the rest of the motor mount off. There's like one, two, three bolts on it. And there's a little plastic shield behind this pulley on the timing belt pulley. And that thing should come off. All right, let's get it. All right, you're going to have to remove the rest of the motor mount. You know, just get it loose enough so the head can come up, okay? There's like one, two, three, four bolts in this, and because that's tied to the head. And you simply get the head off of there now, okay? Let's get it off. If you guys wanted to see the reassembly on this, just leave a comment below. Alright. Alright, let's come and take a look at it. Let's uh, do a water test or something. See what's wrong with number three cylinder. Okay. You gotta be careful if you flip this, these uh if you flip this too much, you'll have those uh those lifters pop out of there. So number three is uh number three is right here. Oh man, I think I see something already. Can you guys see me? Okay. There is the valve is cracked. The valve is busted. All right, let me get you over here. There's no sense of doing no water test right now because I already found the problem. Look at that. Where are you at? Piece of the valve is gone. You guys see that? Where's it at? Right there. Piece of the valve is gone. There's a lot of shit on it too. Let's check that. There's a little, that's just smashed valve right there. That's all that is. That's metal from the valve that rusted off of there. All right, all that shit that's caked up on it, that's all part of the valve. That's actually metal that you're looking at right there. It's that piece crushed. We got to look at the cylinder now. Yeah, it was, it was, it was doing all kinds of crazy shit. How did that happen? Uh, more than likely, maybe that piston popped it. Let's take a look at the piston. The piston looks good. Then there are uh, there are little indentations, so the piston won't for the valve won't hit. 
You know what? I can't explain that. If anyone has any ideas of that possibly could have happened. There's no dings or anything on the cylinder, on the piston. I don't see anything, it looks good. So, I don't know, maybe it would just... I don't know, nevertheless, I'm gonna take it to the machine shop and uh, we're gonna pop a new valve in there. All right, good, man. All right. You know, this is pretty interesting because, you know, the, all the head jobs I've done, I've never seen, I've never seen that before. I've seen plenty of bent valves before, but they just bend, bend from the stem, you know, most of the time. They don't, you know, fall apart like that. So that's kind of interesting. So on a misfire, if these valves are not closing, might as well do a misfire class right now. Uh, if these valves are not closing on the compression stroke, or you have a hole like that in there, there, you know, these, when that piston comes up, it's not squeezing that air, that air is going right through that hole. It's going, you know, misfire, misfire, misfire. If this one, these are all closed, I'm squeezing air together so I can get an explosion. It's squeezing that air and fuel together and a little explosion happens, the combustion, and it slams that piston down and it comes up and does it again and again and again. This one's just a shh, shh, air is coming right out. Shh. All right, so that is another reason for a misfire. So we found a problem, let's fix it. Let's get this accident back on the road again. We're doing everything, new timing belt, new uh, timing, new timing pulleys, everything, uh, water pump, the name that we're doing it all on here, all your gaskets. And that's a wrap, y'all. Hayes Mobile Auto Repair and AC Wacy and Shadow Wado. <laughs> you guys ready to go in the house? Why are you looking so sad? Let's go get some chicken. Let's go. Let's go get some chicken wicked. All right, I'm coming. All right, guys, we out. Peace. You know why I got it off? Let me take a picture of the bracket. I think last time I did this job, I didn't couldn't find out. It took me a minute, you know, a couple minutes to find out where this went. So. There's a picture of it right there. There's a bolt down there. And there's a bolt right there, right there. Okay. Just so when I put it together, I don't have to be guessing. All right. Remove it. We're gonna go ahead and put the bolts back on there too. Put both of them back on there. Less, less bolts in my tray. All right, I'll inspect it. It's going to the machine shop, so everything has to be removed. I'm gonna remove that pulley. All right, this is number three cylinder. There, it looks good, doesn't it? I don't know. I'm just kind of tripping because I've never seen that before. It just broke that tip of the tip of the exhaust valve. It just came apart. I don't know. Maybe it was just a bad valve. I don't know. If anyone uh, ever seen that or knows why that happened, let me know because I am actually clueless right now. Unless it was just a defective valve or something got, I don't know, caught up in there when the valve was trying to close and, and broke that tip off of it. It tried to close and it just got, I don't know. There's something. 
on here. It looks like it's metal. It's hard. I don't know. It didn't mess up the spark plug. That's a new spark plug, remember? Okay. We're going to get a valve job. We're going to get them all redone, relapsed resurfaced and uh, cleaned up and put a new valve in that one at least all right guys let's take it to the machine shop 